Hey guys, it's Ellen Brock, Novel Editor. Today we're going to talk about query letters. So last time we talked about the plot summary in the query letter and today we're going to talk about all the other elements. So the personalization, the comparison titles, the biography, and I'm going to be using examples from real query letters. Now these query letters were very successful. They either had a very high rate of requests for partials and fulls or they actually succeeded in getting representation for the writer. So let's start by talking about personalization. So personalization is when you add a section at the beginning of your query letter that talks about why you're querying this particular agent. You can focus on a lot of different things, but the first thing that I want to go over is if you've ever met this agent in person, if you've ever seen them talk live, or if they requested your materials through some kind of Twitter event. A good example of this is in Cameron Eldridge's query for her novel Lucid when she mentions Thank you so much for expressing your interest in my pitch for Lucid during the Pit Dark Twitter event. So this lets the agent know that they did request these materials, which will probably get it more attention. Another good example is from J.B. Harris's query. We met most recently at your seminar pitches and queries at the CCWC in Hyannis, which was instrumental in helping to craft this query letter. So obviously in most situations you won't have a personal connection to the agent, you won't have ever met them before, and they won't have requested your materials on Twitter. In this case, what I recommend is that you look at interviews or their manuscript wish lists and get a sense of the specifics that they're interested in. And then if you can try to pull out some specific elements that they've mentioned and then compare those elements to your own novel, you can create a much stronger sense of personalization. For example, you could write something like, I read in an interview that you're interested in female-centric novels set in the Middle Ages, and that totally fits what my novel is about. What I don't recommend is personalization that doesn't demonstrate that you've read anything beyond their website submission guidelines. At that point, the personalization just isn't going to achieve anything. For example, saying, I read on your website that you represent middle grade fiction and my novel is middle grade fiction. It just doesn't really give any sense of personalization and you might as well just leave it off. Across the board, personalization is totally optional and you do not have to include it if you don't want to. In fact, some agents really do not care about personalization, but many of them do like it, so it may be helpful to do research on the individual agent's preferences. So at either the beginning or the end of your query, you absolutely must include the word count, the genre, and the title. But you might also want to include some broader information like the themes, the subgenre, or the style, and you might also want to include comparison titles. There are two different ways that you can handle comparison titles. The first is to just describe two books that are similar to yours. So for example, you might say, my novel will appeal to fans of Harry Potter and Narnia. And the second way is to choose two novels that are very different from each other, but both have something to do with your own novels to create a sort of mashup. For example, my novel is The Shining meets The Babysitter's Club. Let's take a look at some examples. Ellen Mulholland includes this information about her novel. The Magical Lemon Tree Recipe Book is a middle grade contemporary fantasy novel complete at 56,000 words with serious potential and will appeal to fans of The Truth About Twinkie Pie and The Peculiar Incident on Shady Street. So she includes a couple of titles that can directly be compared to her novel and that gives a sense of what her novel is like and how it will fit into the market. So let's look at another example. This one is from K.A. Black and she takes a very similar approach except she also adds a description of her characters. The Expanse meets Firefly in Ripple, an adult space opera with literary and fantasy elements. It is complete at 110,000 words. Ripple has a diverse cast and a strong female lead. It is a standalone novel with serious potential. So she still provides a couple of comparison titles, but she also lets the agent know that there's a diverse cast and a strong female lead. And this is information that might be very valuable to some agents, but it doesn't really fit very well in the plot summary. So this is a good place where that information can be inserted. Cameron Eldridge takes a very similar approach in her query letter, but she also lets the agent know the specific elements that she's comparing to her novel from the comparison titles. And this can be very helpful because it gives a much more specific sense of what your story is like. Lucid is a 93,000 word own voices YA contemporary psychological suspense featuring a diverse LGBT cast and a protagonist struggling with major depression. It may appeal to readers who enjoy the setting and atmosphere of Donna Tartt's The Secret History, or the dynamic ensemble cast of Maggie Stiefvater's The Raven Boys. So by giving these specific elements, the atmosphere, and the ensemble cast, the agent has a much better picture of what this novel is like. 
In this section of the query, you can also give a sense of the tone or the style. Sun Yi Dean does this well in her query letter. Anchor to your other self tells the story of two different women in two different worlds who share one life between them. This standalone novel of speculative fiction, 93,000 words, may appeal to fans of Michael Marshall Smith or anyone with a bleak sense of humor. So she lets the agent know that this will appeal to people with a bleak sense of humor, and she also gives a little bit more of the concept of two women sharing one life. It can sometimes also be helpful in historical fiction to use this section to give some historical context to your novel. Hannah Alcaf does this in her query letter very well. I am sending you my query for The Weight of Our Sky, a young adult novel completed about 60,000 words and set against the backdrop of an actual black mark in Malaysian history. Lastly, you can use this section to give a sense of the heart or the theme of your novel. Megan Jacobson does this well in her query letter. Set in a small seaside town north of Byron Bay, Yellow is a murder mystery with supernatural elements, but at heart, it's a coming-of-age tale about the redemptive powers of kindness. The last thing I want to go over is the bio paragraph. The bio paragraph is totally optional. If you don't have anything of particular interest in your bio, or if you don't have any credits, it's totally fine to leave the bio off of the query letter. It's generally not recommended to include information about your college degrees or your career if they don't have anything to do with writing and if they don't have anything to do with the content of your novel. If you do include a bio, it's obviously important to include all of your publications and anything that is relevant to your individual novel. Here's an example of the bio from J.B. Harris's query. My short fiction has appeared in such publications as Boston Literary Journal, The Beacon Street Review, Pucker Brush Review, and Grasslim. A graduate of Emerson College's MFA program, I went on to teach fiction at both the undergraduate and graduate levels. I have been accepted into the Plowshares Annual International Seminar, Breadloaf Writers Conference in Mid Middlebury, Vermont, and the Grub Street Master Novel in Progress program. You can also use the bio to talk about your own experiences and how they connect to the events of the novel. For example, K.A. Black does this well in her query letter. Like Alexandria, I have a love of the stars but would rather stay on Earth. I work as an engineer during daylight hours and run an official partnered writing group through Discord of over 2,000 members on the side, all while dealing with lupus and FMD. It is these diseases that I draw from when writing the hardships and pain that Alexandria goes through during the novel. Unfortunately, every agent has their own opinion about how they like these elements to be formatted and what they like to be included. Some agents don't like bios unless you have a lot of experience that it's really worth sharing. Others always want to see a bio paragraph and there's not a lot of consistency there. So you kind of have to just either do your own research or accept that it's not going to be the perfect query for every agent and that is ultimately okay, but I do recommend wherever possible personalizing your query to the agent just to give yourself a little bit of a better chance of attracting their attention. But ultimately, it's very unlikely that any of these tiny elements or changes are going to affect the agent's interest in your novel. The plot summary is going to be far more important than whether or not you include comparison titles or whether or not you include a biography. So I hope this video gave you a better sense of how to write your own query letter. If you want to read these queries in their entirety, the link is in the description. Happy writing, guys!